The message today, the title of the message today is Put the Reins in the Master's Hands. Put the reins in the master's hands. And y'all, you know, even though we're bikers, we know we're in cowboy country and we know what reins are. They're leather strips that go to some type of piece in a mouth, depending on what kind of bit that is. And it makes the horse do what you want. And the person on the back of that horse is the master. And the horse would be us. And Jesus Christ is our master. And we need to put the reins in his hands. Ask yourself right now, are you putting the reins in the master's hands? A lot of us appear to be. You know what circumstantial evidence is? It's, you know, what it appears to be. How many of y'all saw that Lincoln parked out here last week and thought we were here at church till you came in and couldn't find us? You know, that's circumstantial evidence. I mean, there's people probably went by and thought the pastor was living at the church from Thursday till Monday because the Lincoln was parked right where it's always parked pretty much. That's circumstantial evidence. You go and tell somebody, well, the pastor's up at the church. Well, now you told him a lie because he's not up here. He was in East Texas. How do we get misled in not something that's true? We, we either believe someone else or we jump to conclusions because of circumstantial evidence. Right? I want to read a story, and you all can follow along. Genesis 39, 6 through 20, and this is NIV. So that probably gave somebody else a reason to leave, but anyway. Glory. Praise the Lord. But whatever version you're in, it should help you follow along. Genesis 39, 6 through 20. I'll read the whole story. <laughs> Dustin's like, Monty's back. He can't. I move around a lot. Sorry, brother. <laughs> I noticed when I put those videos on you and you and Randall just stand still. I can, you shouldn't have got me a wireless mic. You see what I'm saying? So, anyway. <laughs> Glory. Verse 6 says, So he, he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with any, anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was built, well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. Uh-oh. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Make a note yourself or even be with her. I've had some ladies upset because I sat on the porch till their husband showed up or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. Sounds like a setup. Don't be with her. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Glory to God. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and he had run out of the house, she called her house servants and said, Look, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until the master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger joseph's master took him and put him in prison the place where the king's prisoners were confined may the lord bless the reading of that scripture this morning amen i want you to take a note about joseph the bible doesn't say that joseph was not attracted to her amen sister it doesn't say that he was not attracted to her it doesn't say that he did not find the temptation hard to deal with. It doesn't say that. What he did was he focused on his God. 
or God and didn't want to sin against God. Amen? What would God have him do? Another note for you is to remember that beauty, either in men or women, often proves itself to be a snare to either one. This requires constant watchfulness on our parts. We can't look at each other in the lust. Today we talk about lust of flesh instead of lust of power or greed, but the lust of the flesh. If we're infected with lust, then using our eyes will infect what? Our hearts, our souls. When we give lust power, do you realize you have to give lust power? You have to give whatever temptation that you're about to sin in, you have to give it the power by going ahead. We have a choice to give power. We have to give it the power. Same with all sins. It can't do anything to you or me. Anger can't do nothing unless you give it the power to allow you. And lust can't do anything unless you give it the power by deciding to follow through with that temptation. When she attempted to catch him, he slipped away and his garment left behind. And she lied about him. She showed the garment and made a lie. And that evidence was circumstantial evidence along with false witness that put him in prison. Amen? How did he remain steadfast? The title of the message, he put the reins in the master's hand. This was a hard thing to do, and it is for you and me on a daily basis, to actually put the reins in the master's hands. He obeyed the command from the master to do what was right. That's why his comment was, can I sin against my God? I'm not going to sin against my God. As you all know, the reins is just small leather strips, and a horse weighs probably 1,500 pounds or more, and that strip can do nothing to the horse. They could literally break those strips. If the strips weren't hooked up to what's called a bit, that hurts. That's a message in that all by itself because we all wear bits. Christian bits and the reins are if you've given your life to the Lord you are no longer a wild horse lost you have some sort of bit in your spiritual mouth are you getting this or am I way over here okay y'all going north and south that's good we're tracking so you have this spiritual bit in your mouth now what kind of bit do you have it's important to know and if you're a wild horse today you can get the reins today and give your life to the Lord and then you'll have the reins and we'll work on those bits amen Once we put the reins in the master's hands, we have to be obedient to that communication, right, left, right. You start over here, and the master pulls you back over here. You start over here, do something, the master pulls you, and he keeps you on that straight and narrow path. Amen? Just little tugs. Some horses take a little more. Y'all ever seen a horse broke, breaking a horse? I had a friend, he's my age, and he can't hardly walk anymore because he... He broke horses for a living. Oh, my goodness. I think you need a, one of those white jackets for that. I don't get it. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to talk about bits because some of us have different types of bits. Maybe this will touch you today. I know it touched a lot of people the last time I gave it. It's an awesome message. But there's a snaffle bit. And if you're not a cowboy, I will explain it. Some cowboys really don't know what a snaffle bit is. But it works on several parts of the, mouth's, the, the horse's mouth and cheeks. And it creates pain when you use it. It um, even creates m uh, discomfort on the tongue and the lips. Now, if you don't know how bad that hurts, you just grab a hold of your own little lip right now and kind of push down a little bit. It don't take much pain. It don't take much squeezing before it starts hurting. Amen? Well, you medication. <laughs> one ounce of correction on a snaffle bit causes approximately one ounce of correction. That would be a person that lusted in their mind, but they stayed true. They started to, but they felt the tug of the bit, and they stayed true. Do you understand? Some of us might have a snaffle bit. We're always tempted, but yet a little bit of pain and discomfort, and we get right back on track. We... We're Christians, but we still don't want to entirely surrender our lives to God. 
and let him be in tr control at all times. So it requires a good little tug once in a while to get us back on track. A lot of us live that daily. But some of us have a curb bit. The curb bit is leverage. It creates more pain. The curb bit, approximately one ounce, can cause anywhere from two to three times what it's supposed to. Spiritual application would be a, a Christian that's entertained that lust in their mind. Joseph would entertain that lust in his mind. Y'all getting this? You know, if you do it in your mind, you still did it, right? Jesus Christ said that. So, um, even though you've given your life to the Lord and you're trying to do right, you got this, this issue. Today we're talking lust. But it could be anything that you're dealing with and struggling with. And you give in to it. At least you entertain the thought. Some of us have entertained the thoughts way too long. And we need to let the Lord that's pulling on that rain get us back on track. Amen. S we call some of those uh, folks uh, hot and cold or on fire for the Lord, then cold again. You know, they, they're just boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden they're just back over here and they're entertaining things from the old money. Hmm? How many of y'all heard of a gag bit? Uh, that, that one there is it's used mainly for horses that are called strong, stubborn pullers. Even though they've been broke and they've got that master on their back, they don't want to do anything they're told. Anything. They want to go where they want to go. They want to do what they want to do even though they've got that weight on their back. They've got that master there and he has the reins. They have to use what's called a gag bit that creates a lot of discomfort to get them to go back where they need to go. Now, in the church, in the body of Christ, we have the same percentages as the secular world for any sin. Those people that call themselves a Christian but still justify that sin and live in it have a gag bit on. They're destined to be a wild horse again and probably going to go to hell. And maybe some of you in here are saying, man, I got a gag bit. <laughs> it's time to change and put your reins in the master's hands. That's that person. That would have been Joseph. Justifying. Well the boss left me here. No one's going to know. And if I make her happy. I'll move up another spot in the kingdom. Quote unquote kingdom. The empire. Some of us justify lying about something so we can be promoted or doing something on some paperwork so we can receive something else or something special. These things that we justify, no matter how small they are, we feel the pull, but we disregard it, and we just continue to keep being a strong puller and doing against God's will. Some of y'all getting this, and you're looking mad at me. Some of y'all got a gag bit once in a while. You, need, you see, when you get a spiritual application, some of us have got a curb bit in some cases, and we got a, a gag bit in some cases, and if we're lucky, we, 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 we got a snaffle bit on some things, right? What do you think Joseph had? Well, it doesn't say anywhere that he lusted in his mind about her, or that he entertained it. or he, It just says he stayed true. He didn't want to sin against God. He didn't sleep with her, so he definitely don't have a gag bit. How many of y'all know what a hackamore bit is? All right, three, four, five people. We got some cowboys riding some iron horses. Amen. You know, a hackamore doesn't have a bit. It's just over the muzzle. It's someone in the spiritual walk with the Lord that has been doing and practicing. See, it takes practice to be a Christian. I hate it when somebody says, well, you're going to live happily ever after. Now you give your life to the Lord. Well, I just told Elijah a while ago. I didn't tell him that, did I, Daddy? Huh? I told him it's going to get, get rough. You're a little man. Gee, Jesus is happy, but Satan's upset. Amen? 
every one of us has got some type of bit. But that hackamore bit is when you've done practiced doing what's right and not doing what's wrong so often that it don't just a slight little twitch and you're like, well, got to quit doing that. A lot of Christians talk to themselves out loud a lot. <laughs> you know, all the church that knows what I'm thinking half the time. I need to just shut up. They they know what I'm thinking half the time, especially when you camp out with me all weekends. Like I can't see the pastor just said that. Yeah, I'm flesh. Huh? Glory to God. But I want to have a hackamore harness. I don't. I know I don't have a hackamore harness in a lot of situations. You know, now I don't have a gag bit on. But we should strive to have a hackamore bit to where just the slightest little twitch. It's not a discomfort. It's a twitch that reminds us of the things where we ended up. And my son, I'm so proud of him right now. He just come out with all the, added, the joke about the handcuffs. It's, I'm going to use that the rest of my life. I hope I get to use it a bunch. Allergic to alcohol and drugs because I break out in handcuffs. That's awesome. It's a good attitude. I think God's going to use him here for Overcomers Outreach or CR or NAAA or one of those. I don't know. But anyway, he's got a heart to help people that's been there where he's at. He says you got to jump down the hole to help him get out. You can't just say, come on, I'll give you a ladder. I don't understand that stuff. But I want to hack a more bit. How many of you all want to hack a more bit? Just a leather strip that tells you, hey, man, that, that, that just a little just a little move, and, and it makes you want to do what God's wanting you to do. Anyway, you all know the story. You've heard it a million times. If, 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 you, if you've read your word, the gossip, the mistrust, the false witness, the appearance, the circumstantial evidence got him in prison. But God favored him there. One neighbor talks about how she'd seen Potiphar's wife gaze at Joseph when he'd leave. Another would agree and hold on to that. Y'all, y'all going, don't look at each other and point now. <laughs> Another would agree and add, you know, Joseph's a big woman. I was look at that guy. He's a hunk. He looks good. Word of God, don't say hunk, but he's a good-looking man. Y'all got that right? Y'all didn't miss that, did you? No. <laughs> Miss Connie. Oh no. <laughs> Amen. This good good looking man. He oh he's a womanizer. He's good looking. He knows it. And one 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 neighbor tells another neighbor and you're entertaining this gossip. Next thing you know, he's running out of the house without his cloak, and that just confirmed everything you thought about the man, right? Ooh. I guess you could say she was a wild horse. She didn't have any bit. She'd never been broke. She wasn't trying to do anything for the Lord. She was totally out there. Now, I don't know if you realize that anything that becomes domesticated that once was wild, it can return back to the wild, right? The pigs are the worst. A pig can be a, become a feral pig in just like a week. I mean, they just, they're right back to doing exactly what they've always done. But, you know, a horse that's been broke and been rode can eventually become wild when it gets back into a pack of wild horses, you know? So whether she ever was or not, we don't know. But we know right now she's a wild horse. She's a wild horse, has nothing wrong. Every, daily, daily trying to get this guy to go to bed. Y'all need to be on the lookout. By the grace of God, Joseph was able to resist. What a temptation. Glory to God. <laughs> I don't know. I need to be sitting back there. You know, when you hear these things the neighbors are talking, you shouldn't be talking or you shouldn't be listening to. Some of us listen and we don't say nothing. And that's entertaining it. And that's what put Joseph in prison. That and the lies. I got a few quotes here. I think these are pretty neat quotes about that. And I'll get off of that about the, the, the gossip and listening to gossip and stuff. But, you know, that's, that's probably one of the worst sins of the body of Christ is the talk that's behind your back. You know, and it, it could be a, a, a long, long message, which I don't preach long ones, but I mean, it could go on forever because people say things about other people and then other people entertain it. And I'm going to tell you what, we have a lot of armor bearers here that call me personally after they've heard something. And you know what? They tell me what they said to that individual and it makes me want to cry. And I do sometimes. One individual is not here right now. We talked for almost an hour. Got bombarded by another individual about me personally and our church. And she bowed up to him, told him what she thought, then got on the phone with me and cried for almost 30 minutes. I said, you did the right thing. You did what you're supposed to do. 
You ain't supposed to entertain it and just listen. Mm, somebody need to hear that. Here's some interesting quotes about your words. You know, your words are powerful, right? Mm. Handle them carefully, for words have more power than atom bombs. That's by Pearl Stracon. Be careful of your thoughts. They may become words at any moment. That one's really, really, really smart. When you hit your thumb with a hammer, be careful of your thoughts. They may become words <laughs> in a few minutes. Amen. My own wife was surprised when I did that. I didn't know I would surprise my wife again. She ain't heard me cuss forever. And she's telling everybody, he didn't even cuss. I'm like, you're my wife. You should know that. I don't cuss. My little man's the one that picks that stuff up from somebody else. It ain't me. Be, be careful of your thoughts. They may become words at any moment. The trouble of, making too f the trouble of talking too fast. Y'all know somebody like this, or you might be one. The trouble of talking too fast is you may say something you haven't thought of yet. That's Ann Landers. Have you ever said something so fatal? I, 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 I really didn't mean that, Danny. I was just, you said it. It's done. If you think little of a person, you ought to say as little as you think. Think about that. No, that's not what happens. People actually say how they feel about people. If you, don't, if you have nothing positive to say about someone else in the body or not even in the body, then be quiet. There's two types that say very little. Now, this is a good one, too. Got to think about it for a second. Some of us are slow, especially after 72 hours of fun. There are two types that say very little. The quiet type and the gabby type. It's good, ain't it? Take that to heart. If you wouldn't write it and sign it, don't say it. Amen? The last two. When you have spoken a word, it reigns over you. When it is unspoken, you reign over it. And Will Rogers, my favorite one, I don't know who he said it to, but we need to say this one. He says, never miss a good chance to shut up. <laughs> Will, Will Rogers. Okay. Now to do this, if you'll turn your Bibles to Psalm 39.1, our Word of God tells us that we need to have Another type of, I like to stay on the horse thing here, right? With the, the reins in the master's hands. It tells we need to have a muzzled or a bridled mouth. Amen? Who's the horse? We are. And what's the master say in Psalm 39? I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Hmm. Another version. I got that don't make no sense. I got NLJV. <laughs> anyway, it says, <laughs> I said, I will guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth, restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. Do you realize that when we had fellowship this weekend with all the Christians and brothers and sisters in Christ, it's pretty easy to talk good wholesome talk because there's no temptations of other people around doing certain things there's a few of them we're still sowing some seed with those folks but but 99 percent of us were so but you notice the word of god even says before you know while the wicked is before me or while the wicked are before me with you right because that's when it comes in you kind of want to start entertaining those that you're around a lot of people say well, I had a pastor one time when he was working on a building, and he cussed. And I looked at him, and he says, what happens at work stays at work? I was like, really? I didn't know that. I was taught different. But anyway, if an evil thought should arise in our minds, we must suppress it and be in charge of it and reign over it. Amen? Put the reins in the master's hands. Glory. Amen. I do have another scripture. Proverbs 17, 4, and it's back on the same thing. I'm beaten. I'm beating on this, but you really need to hear this. Probably going to step on some toes. I already mentioned it, but Proverbs seventeen four says, "A wicked go, a wicked doer giveth heed to false lips." It doesn't say that you did the talking, you did the listening. Did you catch that? A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth an ear to a naughty tongue. It didn't say the liar was doing the talking. Are you listening to this? If you are a liar, you'll listen. Oh, 
And if you're a wicked doer, you'll give heed. I know some folks didn't want to hear that. And that's what happens. I get phone calls and emails and private messages on Facebook preaching unadulterated truth of God. You got the scriptures. The word says it. That's the truth. Amen. Some people want to say the Bible said it. I believe it. That settles it. It don't matter. The Bible said it. That settles it. Whether you believe it or not, that's just a done deal. And the word of God was 17.4 right there. I got to say it one more time. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. Many of us are guilty to that. And I praise God for the armor bearers that stand up and say, look, I can't listen to that. If you can't sow positive thoughts into my body, into my people that I'm with, because we're a small body here, but we're supposed to all be a huge body in Christ. And if somebody's con <coughs> professing to be that and doing the talking, don't give heed to it. Amen. In closing, if you will just put your reins in the master's hands he will guide you through your daily walk if you'll wake up in the morning and put your reins in the master's hands he will get you through whatever those temptations those storms those trials that you're going to go through amen he'll show you his favor over you when you are helpless he will show his favor over you just like he did joseph think about it in the pit and helpless what happened to joseph they were going to kill him but he was sold into slavery. You look at the options. That was a pretty good option. When you and I are in a pit and we feel helpless, he'll show his favor over you and me. Amen. Because we put the reins in the master's hands. He will provide you comfort. He provides me comfort when we find ourselves in slavery. Like he did Joseph. Whatever your slavery is, and a lot of you are in slavery to something. I'm into slavery. I pray to break the bonds every day. Yeah, it's true. I'm a man of flesh as well. But he will get you out of that if you'll put your reins in the master's hands. He will give you the power to overcome temptations just like he provided for Joseph if you'll put the reins in his hands. When you're tempted to return to the vomit like the dogs that we are, he will provide a way out. If we've put the reins in the master's hands. He will protect you and me and raise us above where we are now. If we'll put the reins in the master's hands. So I ask you today to put the reins in the master's hands. With all things. All things. Amen. Before. we say a closing prayer I want to make sure because it would be whew, it would be so bad if I didn't but I want to make sure that there's no wild horses here as we already had one little young wild horse come up who has reins now is there is there any wild horse in here that's never ever given their life to the Lord and put the reins into the master's hands every head bowed no eyes closed and if you're here you just come on up I was like, wait a minute, you didn't give me a chance to raise my hand. You didn't give me a chance to... No, you, if you're serious, you need to get up here and get those reins and put the reins in the Master's hands. Is there anybody here that's never given their life to the Lord? We're on the body of Christ. Good, y'all can look up here. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're all professing to be Christians, bona fide blood-bought saints. You've put the reins in the Master's hand, but now some of y'all probably got certain types of bits that you just got touched by the Lord, and maybe it's the gag bit. Maybe it's a curb bit. Maybe it's a snaffle bit. But if you truly want a hackamore, and you know you need a hackamore, I want you to raise your hand. Randall, would you come up here? And uh, just whoever's raised their hand and let him have a piece of leather. That piece of leather is uh, just going to be a reminder till you lose it that you don't have a hackamore, but you need a hackamore. Um, and that piece of leather has no power it's been prayed over but it has no power it's just to let you know that you have to have the anointing of God to truly truly have a hackamore praise the Lord I'm videoing this so if you don't get one you're in trouble no <laughs> Claudia. 
<laughs> this is the first time we actually did it with a little leather strips, but the Lord put on my heart last night, and at 10 o'clock, I rolled over and said, hey, honey, can you get me some leather strips tomorrow? She said, really? She said, Praise the Lord for armor bearers and helpmates. Glory to God. Now, I guarantee you, because of the prayer and the anointing that's on that little leather strip, <laughs> the next time you see it, you're going you're gonna to think about this message. You're going to think about whether you have a hackamore on or not and whether you've really put your reins into the master's hands. I know some of y'all are carrying around a little racer. Y'all, how many of y'all know Troy, Troy Adler? You know, Troy, he's had a little racer with a smiley, f smiley face is gone. I need to find him a new racer. <laughs> Give God the eraser, you know, a little bitty yellow thing in his pocket. Uh, it, this is just a reminder of the message. Now, a lot of churches you go to, you get back to camp or get home, and he says, that was a great message. And Paul will say, what was it, Mike? And Michael will say, I don't know, but it was good. Amen. There are a lot of churches like that. If you didn't get it today, then you didn't come expecting because you definitely know what you were taught today and you can apply it to your lives. Has everybody got, everybody that wanted, everybody that wanted a leather strip, ha have a leather strip. Amen. Yo, they still need some over there. Oh, you have them. Amen. Showing it off. You're, you're excited for a hack of more? Praise the Lord. And you know what you can do with this too? Later on you can get some more. And you can use this message because as soon as the woman at the well got saved, she went and got a whole city saved. You see what you're saying? You don't have to go to seminary. I didn't. If you read the book, you know that. But anyway, you go out with a leather strip and you can give this same message in your own words and take you five minutes and you might get somebody saved. Now that's for the glory of God. That's what you're supposed to be doing because if you give your life to the Lord, you ain't supposed to be sitting on your rear end here. Spend an hour listening to me. You should be talking to somebody at Walmart. Hey, you got a leather strip. You know what this is for? And I see Danny's thinking already who he's going to talk to about. <laughs> I got I'm going to a biker church, and I'm going to tell you about the reins in the master's hands. Like, you you all don't ride horses, do you? They're iron horses. Okay, don't be trying to use any leather to ride your bike. We've got enough accidents happening already. Praise the Lord. If you've got your leather, raise it up. We're going to pray over it. Amen. Glory to God. Father God, right now, I just thank you for this powerful message, as short as it is, but that you've touched us. Lord, I pray right now that you, you show us where you want us to put this little piece of leather that your anointing is on, and that each time we take a hold of it or we see it we remember that we need a hackamore <laughs> and we just <laughs> we just ask you to help us get rid of the bits we got the snaffle bit the gag bit oh lord just take the curb bit out of our mouth and give us a hack hack hackamore and lord don't let any of us ever quench your spirit when you show us someone else that we need to talk to let us give this leather strip away within the next week to an individual and tell them that they need a hackamore as well. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.